Hello, my name is Jared Skeens and welcome to the Zoom Room. Today I'd like to cover mechanics introduction. So basically this will be an introduction to my mechanics video series where I prepare students for taking the Cambridge uh, A-level exams, specifically uh, dealing with the mechanics book. Now, this is the book that I just use as a guide as far as uh, content, but I rearrange things in my video series and in my class uh, for uh, my own learning purposes and teaching purposes. So I'd just like to introduce uh, what I do and a few things about the mechanics course. Uh, of course, uh, with mechanics deals with gravity and in the mechanics book for Cambridge they just use 10 so you don't have to use 9.8 that you might learn in physics class so you can just use 10 as far as being positive or negative it is very important in the whole mechanics uh, syllabus to keep in mind your point of reference, whether it's displacement or velocity or acceleration, the positive or negative will depend on your point of reference. So for example, if you're using the ground as your point of reference, well, gravity is pulling you toward the ground. So since it's pulling you back toward your point of reference, then of course it's gonna be negative. But if your point of reference is the release point of an object above the ground and acceleration is pulling you away from that release point, if that is your point of reference, then the acceleration would be positive. So keep in mind throughout the questions, uh, what are you specifically using as your point of reference that will determine positives and negatives with displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Uh, there is a little difference between the mechanics uh, book and the other books that I teach, pure math and statistics. They, uh, those, the, they tend to be a little bit uh, more uh, different units and the questions will correlate, say, two or more units into one particular question. With mechanics, it's more cumulative. It's not so much that it correlates as it builds. It builds in a cumulative manner, and so it's more like onion layers, and you keep adding another layer and layer onto the information that you previously uh, taught. So in the mechanics book, this is the newer one. The older version had 11 chapters in it. And this newer one, I believe, has just nine, nine chapters in it. I still break down uh, my teaching into six units. So uh, in the first unit, I do distance, velocity, and acceleration. And I include, uh, in the old book, it was chapter one and chapter 11. In the newer book, it's chapter one and chapter six. I include it together into the same unit for a couple reasons. One, my students have already had pure mass one, so they've already learned calculus. Second reason why I put it together is because I want my students to focus on the key element that determines which formula set you will use, and that is acceleration. So acceleration is the key, but basically you're still solving for the same uh, same things, either a displacement, a velocity, or an acceleration. And so I want them to get used to both of those uh, questions side by side. And Cambridge sometimes has a question where both of them are included in the same question, where one particle is following like a SUVA formula and the other particle is following a calculus formula. So I put those together in one unit. I want my students to think through uh, the problem and find those key, key uh, concept points. This is a foundational, one of the foundational blocks that carries on all the way through the others. The other 
foundational block is the resolving forces. And I put that as one unit by itself, where I focus just on the skill of applying your trigonometric uh, functions to uh, resolving your forces horizontally and vertically. And so these two are foundational to the rest of the book. And then I move into adding the layers with uh, my third unit is friction and inclined planes. And with where you have your friction formula and you also then have to start resolving your forces parallel to the inclined plane. And of course, your normal contact force is involved with the friction. Then the fourth unit, connected particles. Connected particles would include like tensions on string with uh, pulleys, also a car connected to a trailer. Um, it would include uh, basically anything that's connected in either way and can either move as a system or can be separated into the individual components. Then uh, a new topic for this 2020 syllabus, the new syllabus cycle, the new topic is momentum. Honestly, I didn't quite know where to put momentum. So for right now, I've left it its own little unit. Uh, so there's only one video in this uh, unit. And it basically deals with collisions and coalescence. Then the last unit is work energy and power. And I separate that into two videos, one for work and power and one for uh, energy. So that's how I organize the material. So total, I have 12 content videos, one introduction video, which is what you're watching right now, and one complete past paper video. I might make more in the future, but right now I have one complete past paper video. If you've seen my introductions for the other uh, Cambridge books, I, I do Statistics 1, Pure Maths 1, and Pure Math 3. So if you've watched an introduction from one of the other video series, uh, you will see that basically uh, when I teach a video, I try to focus on three different things. Training the mind, that is with the concepts. Training the skill, that is the mechanics of how to actually do the formula. And also some past paper examples to illustrate. Now, with mechanics, this mind and skill part are kind of abbreviated and blended and uh, base, basic introduction with more focus on examples. And the reason is with mechanics, I have a higher expectation of prerequisite material. For example, my students have already had Pure Maths 1. So they've already learned calculus. Now all they have to do is just apply it to the displacement velocity acceleration. My students have already learned trigonometry. So the, you know, the math part of this material they've already learned. So it's more on application at this point. Once you get down to these additional layers, the math skill isn't really that difficult. Friction formula, work, power, those, and, uh, those are just multiplication. Energy does include uh, exponents. Um, momentum is just multiplication and addition. So there's not really complicated mathematics here. So the math is usually, uh, usually has already been learned and it's more on applying it to the physics application. Uh, also, I assume that students who are taking mechanics for A-level math probably uh, are taking some form of physics class for science and will also have a little bit of overlap in some of the, the content. So because I have a higher expectation of prerequisite knowledge, then this mind and skills part 
isn't quite as developed and distinct as it is in my other video series. Uh, there is more of a, there is an introduction, yes, uh, briefly, and then go right into the examples. I also provide for each uh, book and video series set, uh, mental notes for my students and a booklet uh, or a module, if you want to call it that, uh, that includes uh, past paper questions. I do not assign homework from the textbooks. And uh, the reason why I don't assign homework from the textbooks is because the textbooks tend to be focused on an individual chapter and uh, I want my students to have more of that uh, Cambridge exam mentality where they need to correlate all of the information that they've learned up to that point. So just to show you really quick what I'm talking about, uh, for mental notes, what I have here is this is an example for my mechanics mental notes. Here's distance, velocity, and acceleration. It's the first unit. So uh, right here you see part one. This is my video series. So if you look up uh, M1 or mechanics, I, I realize the one is no longer there in the new syllabus. The M1, there used to be an M1 and an M2 uh, in the old syllabus. Uh, now it's just mechanics, but out of habit I still put M1. Uh, so the mechanics syllabus, uh, my first unit, this distance, velocity, and acceleration. So you see in part one of my video series, I'm covering the SUVAT formulas. And then down in part two of my video series, a second video is the calculus formulas. And then I also have a part three where I look at the two combined in the same uh, question. So I provide this something like this for every unit uh, through the entire uh, video series to give the students a place to write notes before they get into the actual homework. So for the homework, basically what I've done is cut and pasted a bunch of past papers. So this is one example. So this is again for mechanics, for the unit of this, uh, distance, velocity, acceleration, and this happens to come from the summer 18, 2018 uh, past papers. And you can see I just have cut and pasted them all, and all of these questions deal with this particular unit. And so part of separating my units is based on question types. And uh, so here is just basically a two-page uh, front and back uh, with four to five questions. And I generally have four of these worksheets per unit. So there will be four of these worksheets for the um, distance, velocity, and acceleration uh, topic. So that's how I do my classes. And this introduction is either for my students so that you know what to expect or if you uh, happen to be another teacher or happen to come online and find this, uh, that you know that there is an entire video series that I put on YouTube that is there to just help you in your learning process, especially if you're interested in uh, working to achieve on a Cambridge AS or A level examination for math. And I hope that you enjoy the video series. Thank you for joining me in the Zoom room and hope to see you again next time.